Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a get ready with me and just like current beauty favorites video. We're meshing it into one. This is my everyday like makeup routine that I've been doing lately. It's a little bit more extensive, I will say. It's like for the days that I like really have time to sit and do it, but I love the way it's been turning out. I'm going to share with you guys some of my favorite products along the way and like small, even if I didn't use everything, share some of my other favorites and it's just a very fun like throwing it back to the Brooke X Beauty days if you know you know. Let's get into the video. All right so we are starting at the beginning. I already clipped my hair back but I just used these clips. These are from I think Glam Glow sent them to me. I just like to get my hair back out of my face and I like these. They're fun. Also wearing this super cute set from Free People. Very comfy today. I actually just have to film like a few things today. I don't think I'm leaving my house. I love those days. I already left my house to run the errands this morning. I've also been like getting a lot better about, I know this sounds so silly, but like leaving the house without makeup on, that used to be something that I was really like insecure about. I remember in college and everything, like every time I was like, oh, let's go grab breakfast or run errands. Like I would always be like, okay, let me put on like a little bit of makeup first. And now I'm like bare face, like run out the door. I, I put on SPF, but you know what I mean? I'm getting a lot better. And that's like a win in and of itself. But this routine, it's a little bit on the heavier side, I guess. Like it's definitely, it's not light makeup, you know? You could definitely add and subtract steps. I'm gonna also talk about like some of my favorite products on the way. So take that how you will. So I already have moisturizer on. This is just from Dr. Jody, who helps me with like skin stuff. Just like an oil-free moisturizer. And then I put on eye cream. I just used the Paula's Choice eye cream. And then as a base for makeup to get my skin like kind of like tacky. I have been really into skin prep lately. I'm telling everybody who will listen about this because I feel like it makes my makeup not only last better, but it improves the skin underneath it. It just, it enhances the whole look. And I feel like I need to say, obviously not a makeup expert by any means, but I've just like been picking up tips here and there. I've like known how to do makeup, but I'm like improving, you know? Like I feel like I see the results improving. So anyways, this is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Night cinnamine dew drops i've been using these for a while i just use like one or two pumps of them and i just put it on just with like my finger just all over my skin it's like a serum basically it really doesn't like look like anything on your skin if anything you just like yeah have a little bit of a glow but i just really like the way that it acts as a base for makeup i feel like moisturizer is good too but this is like really good stuff yeah my skin isn't even that great today so this is actually a really good day to do the routine i have you see some redness and like acne that i put pimple patches on that is like dried up and whatever so we're gonna want to cover it all which is why this video comes at a perfect time we're gonna do some spf so this is the glow screen from super group you could also like use this as a primer but i like doing the like i'll do all the skin prep i don't care i'll do like a full skincare routine as the base not actually but you know what i mean this has a tint to it you can see this is the golden hour one and it definitely has a little bit of color it definitely is a little bit of a darker shade for my skin currently because you know we're getting into fall i haven't been like tanning really sometimes i self tan i use like tanning drops but like I, I don't know my biggest thing is matching my foundation to like my body like that's or my neck i guess i should say that's probably going to be the struggle of this video which is what i normally you know this is such a good product to wear like on its own i talk about it i feel like all the time but if you're like running out the door and you want to put on your spf and still like a little something on this does it looks really good i feel like that just you know alone my skin looks pretty good but we're gonna keep going obviously we have a lot to do i have a lot of work to get through now on top of that first i'm gonna prep my lips this is mac lip conditioner just while we do the rest of the makeup why not have like a fun lip product on any sort of lip balm is fun but this one i've been really liking it's like glossy but light at the same time it's it's really just a good lip balm now for the skin prep for the base of the makeup finally we're starting i feel like this is taking forever I'm gonna use these two products. This is e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter and this is Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Finish, Hollywood Flawless Filter. You can't see because the name is off. This is a dupe for this, similar enough, I guess. And what I've been doing recently is using a little bit of each one because I've heard that this one is hard to find. So I was like, okay, the solution for that will just be, let's just use a little bit of each of them. And I've been liking the way my makeup's been coming out. So it has like this applicator and I literally just take this all over the skin. Now you could use this as skin prep or you could use this on its own. You could use it as like a highlighter. I feel like it has a bunch of like different uses, but I actually use like a really pretty good amount of this. This is like a primer kind of too. I don't know. That's how I look at it at least. I guess I don't use like a proper like primer, but I use all these like skin products. So, you know, that's why. And I'm using a beauty blender today to blend everything in. I feel like what I've learned is to like blend it kind of by patting it in like that into the skin versus like, blending like rubbing you go like in 
up and down motion, if that makes sense. That like sets it into the skin. This is like a really nice like glowy base too, I like. I'm gonna try to blend down my neck today too so that we don't have any problems. Like you could totally just do this and like concealer and stop there. And I do that often. I've even done that for like, you know, when we record the podcast, whatever, like it really just depends the state of my skin, but I have been liking the more like full coverage look. Also like today, I feel like I could probably use it. Just why not? So that is what that all looks like. Does a good job of just getting everything kind of nice and set. All right, now we are going in with concealers. So I'm gonna talk through some of my favorites. My makeup bag is just like an abyss. This big one from Zitstika, I don't know, they sent it to me, but it's just like a bottomless pit. It fits so much stuff that I just keep shoving more in there and I'm like, okay, gotta make sense of this bag. So these are the three concealers I've been loving lately. Huge concealer girl, I always, that's like the thing that I would never leave my house without doing is concealing my under eyes. I got some under eye filler in the past few years. This is the story with under eye filler. So I, I got it in college one time and I honestly just didn't see the results and it was expensive. I felt like there was no change to my face. So I was like, what? why the heck did I pay all this money for something that I, I don't even see the results? So then I was like, no more under eye filler. Then I started going to Dr. Jody, but she helps me with my skin. And I talked to her about it and she was like, no, no, no. Let's try some and I loved it. I loved the way that she did it. It didn't make me look puffy Like I feel like I just have you know some hollows under my eyes and then she goes in and just I don't know how to explain it But they felt less dark and I felt like my face felt more like awake So maybe that just like plays into the psychology of like I don't need to put on concealer every day But that was like my thing growing up. I was like always like I gotta wake up put on my concealer So when it comes to under eye concealer, I use Tarte Shape Tape that I feel like is like the heavy duty brightening boosting. This does a really good job. It's a very full coverage concealer, I would say, and it does a good job of all over the face, but I really like it under my eyes. You only need to use a little bit of this guy. Then for all over the face, it's been a, like a tie between these two and they're very different. This milk one is new to the routine. It's the Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. You only need the smallest amount of this because it's so spreadable. Is that even the word? I feel like I'm like baking, like it's like spreadable. But actually, it really does a really good job of like, you know, spreading out whatever. And then I really like the Kosas Concealer too. This one is a little more natural looking. You could blend it with your finger and make it look like super... I guess you could blend this one with your finger too. But I feel like the Kosas one's a little more natural looking. The Future Fluid's a little more like high intensity vibes. Which I feel like like there's some spots on my face that I would use the more high intensity one. And others I wouldn't. I kind of go all over the place. Like, do I put all my concealers on my face at the same time? Whatever. Like, I, I kind of usually just like put them all on and then blend. And I like to, like I just put on the Tarte Shape Tape. What I like to do is take a finger and like blend it a little bit first, and then I'll go in with the sponge and like finish it out. But I feel like getting it like patted in with my finger kind of helps. I don't know, some people like do everything with their hands. Like they blend in their foundation, everything with their hands too. I personally like a sponge. I feel like you could like really get into like the crevices and everything without like poking your eye out if you're like me doing nails and just like getting it in there. That's for the under eyes. Okay, now I'm gonna use some of the milk concealer. You literally, like I said, need the smallest amount of this. I feel like I'm naturally like so heavy handed with concealer, but this one you like literally don't need to be heavy handed with. And I'm gonna go in with my finger at first and then the sponge. Every time I film my makeup, I get nervous that I'm gonna like mess something up majorly or like it's not gonna turn out the way. Well, it never turns out right. I swear, like the days that I don't film me doing my makeup, it comes out so much better than the days I do film it. But that's okay. Now I'm gonna use the Kosas concealer. I know I've been like using like a bajillion concealers, but I like layering up products instead of just like slapping stuff all over. I feel like sometimes it looks better to like progressively add layers of product. That's also something that I learned from Kat. Cam Artistry, our makeup artist. I'll probably reference her a lot in this video because she taught me a lot of tips. It looks pretty good for just concealer. Like you could stop here if you want. But no, we're going all in. Foundation, let's talk foundations. I have um, a repertoire of ones that I've been enjoying. So I will show those to you now. And this is just like currently, you know, this is just like the stuff that's currently my makeup bag, of course. And that's the thing. I'm so lucky that this is my job because I get to always try out new products, whether that be beauty, fashion, whatever. So I'm constantly like swapping things out of my makeup bag. Kosas foundation. How do I want to describe it? I feel like I'm like <laughs> talking about like my friends. I'm like, oh. Oh my, like giving a speech at like their wedding or <laughs> so I'm like losing my mind, I swear. Where do I even begin? This is definitely the more natural, I guess, of them. It still is definitely like a full coverage foundation, but gives a nice glow. It definitely is a little bit more like dewy vibes in terms of like the finish. Like I feel like it's not super like mattifying. It's more like glowy 
and set it with powder. I really, really like this one. I've gotten a bunch of people hooked on it. I do say so myself. Okay, this one is like the full bead, flawless everything. Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. Stays all day and night. And this one lasts, let me tell you. There's been many times when I put this on and I'm like, I come home at the end of the day, I'm like, holy crap, my foundation still looks amazing. And it's just because this product is that good. I feel like it's pretty pricey, but like, if you're like looking to do, you know, your full glam makeup, like for your nights out, or if you have like, you know, an event or something, like literally this is perfect. And it comes off really pretty on camera too. And then somewhere kind of in the middle of those two, I feel like is the Makeup Forever one, which is why I like this a lot because I feel like it is a little more like camera ready glam, but also blends like a dream. Like I feel like I'm a TikTok makeup artist, but actually blends fantastic. I have it in two shades because I like to blend them together to like kind of get my proper shade, which I probably should have more shades of these ones. That's the rundown. Sometimes I mix foundations too. Like I've been recently mixing the Charlotte Tilbury with the Makeup Forever. That's like a good combo. But then the past few days I switched back to Kosas. I'm like, damn, I remember why I like you so much. So we're gonna use that today. Still totally a full coverage look, but like I'm not going to take any high definition photos or like do a red carpet or anything. Um, just a few pumps on the back of my hand. Like I said, what Kat taught me is tiny thin layers when it comes to foundation. So like instead of just globbing it all on and like rubbing it on, kind of taking your time section by section. And that's also how it lasts longer too, I feel like. We're working section by section. I've been seeing a lot of people like saying to be careful when blending like here by your nose. Wow, you could just see that that shade is a little different than my actual tan, but it's fine. We're gonna blend down the neck. Yeah, I've been seeing people saying be careful like when you blend around your nose because that's where you see like it gets like kind of like crusty and crunchy looking, I guess. <laughs> so I'm trying to be careful there. So now that I finished like one layer of foundation, I'm going in with like another second one just over those spots where, like I said, I have you know, some acne, maybe like some redness peeping through or like discoloration, whatever, like from the acne. All of the foundations that I showed actually are pretty good at, you know, building up. I just love this foundation. Like it just so good. The skin still looks like skin. It definitely like looks like I have something on my skin. It's not, you know, perfect, but I feel like it has a nice sheen to it. Ugh. I don't even know like all the proper words, but like, I just feel like it looks good. That's all that I know. And that's it for the foundation concealer of it all. Sometimes I go back in and like hit a few spots, like if they're, you know, peeping through with the concealer again, but at the same time, you don't want it to get like too, too heavy. So it's hard to make that call, but I have some spots down here that I'm like, I could hit that again. I've been big on using cream products on my face. And then like we set it with a powder later. Another milk product that I use and love is this Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick. I didn't really like know how to use this, I feel like for the longest time, and then I figured it out and I was like, whoa, game changer. So it's a cream bronzer sort of stick. So little and cute. I use this to contour. I do the cheek sucking thing to like find my cheekbones. I guess like I have a little bit of a cheekbone, but. And then I do a little bit on the forehead and the chin. Now the secret for the cream bronzer that I've learned is using like a dense fluffy brush, or I don't know if this is fluffy, but this is like a, it's a very dense brush, I guess. This is from Taylor Wynn and Sigma. Taylor Wynn's a YouTuber that I love so much and she did a collab with Sigma. And for a while, I didn't know what to do with this brush. And then I was like, wait, when I figured out how to use this cream bronzer, I was like, oh, I know how to use that. I have a perfect brush for it. It's like heavy. So what we do with this is we go in and uh, start buffing it out basically. <laughs> You guys know that I have a scar under my chin here. It's not bad and it's like really underneath because when I was younger, I jumped backwards into a pool. It was like my friend's pool party, right? And one girl was like, I will never forgive her. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I will, but I definitely still think about it. One girl was like, let's all do backwards cannonballs into the pool. Well, little Brookie doesn't have the best coordination. So me doing a backwards cannonball, I busted my chin open. I didn't jump far enough from the thing. Now, luckily, it's like on my chin. My eyebrow's a different story, you can see that. I wasn't the most coordinated kid. I remember when that happened, I was like, I'm not getting stitches. I made a huge thing. I literally told my parents, I was like, Brooke Michio is not getting stitches. I caused a scene and I didn't get stitches. I ended up just wearing like butterfly band-aids, which I guess helped with like healing. And it ended up being fine. You literally can't even tell. I don't like a crazy contour, but I feel like this gives, you know, like the bronzy effect while still kind of carving out my cheekbones a little bit. Blush. 
we're using Rare Beauty. You guys probably know the drill with this by now, but you use like literally the smallest amount. I've made my mistake by like swiping it on and I'm like, you can't blend it out. It's interesting because you can put blush a bunch of different places and it kind of like shapes your face in a way. I've just been, you know, like if you put it closer to the apple of your cheek, I know some people don't like that as much. I do like it, but I've also been blending it kind of up more. So I kind of do it like, I do two spots. One. Ew. And this is another one that I start by blending it with my fingers and then I go in with a brush. This is like a Morphe brush. I really need to wash them. That's what I need to do. How often do you guys wash your makeup brushes? And I know I'm, you should wash them every week. Like I, I know what I should do, but just tell me how often you actually do. Okay. Sometimes with the Rare Beauty blush, I actually do go in and add some more. And in this case I might. It's so pigmented, but sometimes I like go light handed with it because I get nervous that I'm going to use too much. I like blending it a little bit on my nose too. Just for a little rosy look. Love to see it. What should I do next? Brows maybe? I struggle with brows, I do. This is a new add to the routine, so this is like kind of a, you know, an asterisk to the section, but Kat has used this on me a few times and then I decided to order it, so I'm still trying to like figure out how I personally am going to work with it. However, when I used it yesterday, I really, really liked it, like more than anything I've used in a while. This is the Valentino brow pencil. Whenever I say Valentino, I think of the TikTok or whatever, where she's like, Chloe, you got makeup all over my white Valentino bag. I spilled lipstick in your Valentino bag. Oh, you spilled lipstick in my Valentino. So this has a bunch of stuff to it. It's a brow trio, so it has like the brush, this tip, it's kind of like a liquid eyeliner but for your brows. And then this one is just a pencil. So, pretty cool. She was pricey, as is a lot of this makeup. I'm not claiming that this is like a budget-friendly makeup routine at all. I feel like I don't really like finish a lot of my products though. Like so many of these foundations and everything I've had for like what feels like forever. I feel like I almost have to get rid of them because they're expired first. Powder products I go through fast. So I brushed them out. I am just a simple girl. I like a filled in brow. I, I don't really like them like with the pushed up look or anything. I don't like it on me at least. I love it on other people, but I just like a full filled in brow. And I already have something to work with, so that's good. But what we go in and do with this one, you're supposed to basically make like little brush strokes. Now, you know, do as I say, not as I do, because I'm gonna try my best. But this, you're supposed to go in and like just do little, little motions where you're like, essentially painting in brush hairs. I guess I should have done powder before. My, I really switch up the order of my routine every time. It's really like whatever I'm feeling. It's like, I feel like I'm doing a lot, but well, you can see the difference between the two brows now. At least I can, I don't know. This one definitely looks more full, but it's natural looking. I don't know, this product is amazing. Now for the other eye, brow. How often do you guys get your eyebrows done? Or how often do you like tweeze them, I guess? Some people don't get them done, I guess. I get them waxed every little bit probably do again. I'm always so scared though that by going more often they're gonna make them really thin, which I know is definitely not the case, but I like push it off as long as I possibly can. I went maybe a month and a half ago. October is one of my favorite months, so I hate to see it go, but I love to watch her leave. It's one of my favorite months before it gets like unbearably cold. This requires a lot of focus. You know when you're just like, I'm just gonna accept it as it is because if I do any more, I could ruin the progress I've made. That's how I feel. I'm satisfied with the result. Normally I listen to music or a podcast when I'm getting ready, most of the time a podcast, or I watch YouTube videos. So this, it's always weird doing it in silence. I mean, not that it's so natural for me to film, but it's quiet. It's really quiet. For setting powder, I'm using Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. This is the lightest shade. I really just do this in the T-zone where I get oily and on my chin. I kind of avoid the cheeks because we just did all that contouring and everything which I guess I don't really set with a powder, which I guess is kind of risky. Sometimes I go over it with like actual blush or actual bronzer, like powder form. This powder is amazing if you're just doing a look with like concealer and um, whatever, like this is a really good powder to just kind of use. I don't, where's this brush from? I love it. This is from MAC Stranger Things Collection. This is a really good like setting powder brush, I feel like. This just like absorbs all the oil and still makes your makeup look good. Like it's such a good powder. I just took a cooking class. They talked about in the cooking class mise en place, which I need to look up what this means, but I'm pretty sure it means something about like the order of places. It's a French culinary phrase, which means putting in place or gather. It refers to the setup required before cooking. It's often used in professional kitchens to refer to organizing. And I feel like I want to start applying that concept to like my makeup, you know, like before I do my eyes, I put out all my eye products because this is like a zoo, but then I can like put out the individual things. That cooking class really changed my life. I mean, damn, clearly.
Now for my eyes, I've been a little all over the place. I, I, you know, some days I do full looks, some days I don't. I'm kind of using some new products recently. So I guess we'll just go with that theme of like YOLO, right? Okay, so first what I'm gonna use is like a primer slash like this almost is the product. This is from Giorgio Armani. It's like a cream eyeshadow. Honestly, I was looking at Sephora for like best cream eyeshadows because I like something that I could just like swipe on and kind of have a pretty look. And this came up. I'm not 100% obsessed, but I can't tell if that's just because it's the color, but I feel guilty now that I wanna use it and it is a good base. It's just, it wasn't like exactly what I was looking for. Like it's, it's a, I don't know how to describe it. it. If it stayed this color, I think I would like it more, but when you blend it out, it just like doesn't, it, it, it loses it for me. So if you guys know any good cream eyeshadows that are just like a one stepper, let me know. I really like the Bobbi Brown uh, like eyeshadow sticks. Those are good, but I was like, oh, I'll give something else a shot. I, I should have just stuck to what I know. It's just kind of like whatever for me. Oh my God, we're so close. Hi guys. This is a recent add to the collection, like literally yesterday. So I've only used it yesterday, but this is the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette and I like a simple, a simple eye for every day. So I'm gonna be using some of these matte colors down here, these two specifically. So this is Scandal and this is Mother and then Woman. So I guess I'm gonna use like the combination of those three colors. Do not take my advice on this. I feel like the, the, the theme of this, I used to use bronzer as eyeshadow, like just taking kind of a neutral matte shade and using that almost even though I just use like a shimmery base. No matter what I do with eyeshadow, I feel like it always looks the same. I could use, do the most, like think I'm doing the most elaborate thing and it, it always somehow looks the same. And I just use like a fluffy brush to kind of get those two colors in there. I've realized that with eyes, the secret, I guess with the rest of the face too, is blending. Cause I used to just like throw colors in the crease, but if you sit there and actually give yourself the extra minute to just sit there and blend out the color, it looks so much like smoother. <laughs> That was that. I'm gonna blend it out a little bit more. But now I'm taking that shimmery shade. Basically what I like to do for eyes is like a champagne -y shimmery and then like a matte, more like bronzy shade. Like that combo is like a good everyday combo for me. And the like champagne -y shade we do the first half of the eye. I feel like it's a good, a good staple look that I've been, you know, rocking since like middle school. And it's just, it feels safe to me, I have to say. It feels safe. And I like to put it underneath my eyebrow too. Is that the brow bone? I don't even know the names of the places, guys. I switched to another like fluffy blending brush just to switch it up, you know? Now this is something new and exciting I've been doing. Eyeliner brush and I'm doing a brown liner. I already have it actually on this brush from yesterday. I took the brown shade in this palette, like a dark brown here. I like brown more than black because it's a little less intense and it's almost like more of like a, I don't know, it, it gives like the illusion that it's actually your eye in a way. Like I feel like black eyeliner is so harsh and it's like, oop, there's your wing. This, I just, I've been really into it. This is the color Transition and I'm using a Sephora, Sephora angled liner brush. Before I got this, I literally got this yesterday. I was doing this routine with using a brow pencil or using like a brow, like I was literally using like this Benefit Brow Palmade as an eyeliner, which I, don't, I think that's safe. I, but I decided to upgrade and do, I started doing it with eyeshadow too. I feel like it gives a little bit more of like a smudgy look. It doesn't need to be as perfect, which I like. And you'll see I'm not the best at making this line. So I have it on there and what I do, I don't like like a crazy thick line even like that. It's so minimal. You might even be able to barely see it. Oh shit. My nails just clawed into this palette. It just ruined it. It's like a brand new gorgeous palette. And I just dug my claws into it. Pissed. Well, Next eye. This is the most stressful part of doing makeup on camera, I think. So you see, I'm actually happy with that. If you could even see, it's like the littlest line, but I feel like it really makes a difference, you know? At least I think, I think it's good. The eyeliner actually isn't even perfect, but I feel like when we curl our lashes, put on mascara, it doesn't really matter so much. I use Tarte eyeliners. This one is really important to me. I like this a lot. It's called Fake Awake and it's like a lighter, it's not white, but it's like very close to white little liner shade so i line the bottom with this and sometimes i go into like the corner of my eye and just put a little bit of that in there too hello i'm up and then this is tarte double take liner i should get a brown liner to do this with because i just said how black i, I feel like is intense sometimes however we're gonna go with it anyways so this is a brown pencil liner and i tight line with this on the top and we're curling our eyelashes i always curl them some people tell me that they skip this step 
I feel like it makes a huge difference for me. I don't know if like you're scared of it or if it's like bad for your eyelashes or whatever. I don't find that it's that bad for mine. I, I use the Shiseido eyelash color. And then what I like to do actually before I put on my mascara is set my makeup because I feel like sometimes if I set my makeup after mascara, I get like black under my eyes from the mascara. This is Glam Glow Glow Setter. I really like it. Once again, gives a little bit of a glowy look. So if you're not super into that, I wouldn't recommend. But if you are, it's really good. She's really good. It also is such a fine mist. Sometimes setting sprays are so jarring. It's like, poof, poof. this one, like, look at how gorgeous that is. And it smells really good. And so I curled my lashes and so now it's time for Tartlet Mascara. I really like this one because I get a lot of transfer to underneath. I feel like this one, I don't get that as much. It's a good mascara. Guys, I'm pretty much done. I need to figure out what I want to do to my lips, but this is what the face looks like. I feel like an old school makeup artist when I was like doing my old tutorials and I would like model and be like, keep watching to get this look. It takes a while. That's the con of this. I feel like at least for me, I just haven't gotten it down that I can do this really fast, but it does look She's really good. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna stick to like these two products today. I've been trying to get more into lip liner and stuff, but I don't feel really comfortable doing that yet on camera. Cause I always, it just like doesn't look right. So I'm gonna do this tart juicy lip and then a gloss over it. This does a good job of hydrating. I just love lip gloss. I love it. I love keeping it like with me, reapplying it throughout the day or the night. Ah, oh, something about it. And then this is the Fenty Beauty Lip Gloss in Fenty Glow is like the original color. It's such a good gloss. I, I can't even tell you how many of these I've purchased. 10 out of 10, very sticky though, but in a good way. Gorge, I'm obsessed. I have these big makeup wipes from MAC. God, all the MAC stuff is just such a throwback, isn't it? If you guys watched YouTube back in the old school days, yeah, I'm just wiping off the back of my hand because I don't really feel like washing my hands right now because I'm filming and talking to you guys and it's fun. So that is my everyday makeup right now when I have time, of course. Like if I'm like, I got five minutes, like I can't do this, you know? But this has been actually like the routine recently for like when I record the podcast, if I have to film anything or record anything for like Instagram, whatever, or if I just know I'm going somewhere that I want to look good. This is what I do, pretty much. Add or subtract the products that I showed you guys, and, you know, the steps and whatnot. Here, I could take out my clips. And I wanted to talk to you about hair really quickly too, because I, I didn't do a hair tutorial, but I did get my hair cut shorter and it's a little bit, a little shorter than I anticipated, but we're making it work. The volume and everything today is looking good. I used the air wrap to get this look. I wanted to show you the products for hair that I'm liking right now. These are the hair products I'm really liking right now. First up, I've been trying to grow my hair, so I've been using growth serums. I finished the Bottle of the Way Thickening Serum, which I loved, but I happen to already have this one on hand, so I switched to this one. I haven't like seen the results of this one yet. I saw the results of the Way one, at least I thought, because I used that one for a few months. This is the Vegamore Grow Hair Serum. I just like to use a hair serum. It's this one doesn't make my hair oily though, I will say, and it's just in a dropper bottle. So you could use it on your hair wet or dry, but I do like using it on my hair wet after the shower. I section it in a bunch of different parts and kind of like rub it in. I'll keep you updated on it. The bottle's really pretty though. And then for actual like post shower, like my hair is wet, I towel dry it for a little bit. I don't like it to be soaking wet when I put these products in, but like eventually I'll put them in. I use the Kerastase Elixir Ultim. I use like one pump of this. It's an oil, so you don't need to use too much. And this I just kind of rub all over my hair. I think that's like what it says to do. Yeah, apply one to two pumps on wet to dry hair leave in. Beautiful oil for dull hair seeking shine. I feel like I see a lot of shine from this product and it makes my hair feel really good. So that's like the oil that I use. And then to protect my hair from heat and just kind of keep it looking good as it's drying, I use the Living Proof Triple Bond Complex Hair Strengthener. And this I do one to two pumps. This says apply to clean damp hair and comb through. So yeah, and then like wait 10 minutes. So that's, I would say that's what I do. I use like a pump or two, focus it on the ends, kind of rub it all over. And then I wait and then I blow dry my hair. And those are some faves recently. They also smell pretty good. So that's fun. But yeah, this is my everyday makeup routine lately and just some beauty favorites that I've been loving. I hope you guys enjoyed chatting with me. I always have so much fun filming these. I feel like I just get to be myself and just exist and we have fun. I will link below as many of the products as I can. Let me know if you have questions. Like I feel like I've just been getting a lot of questions on like what products I'm using. So I just kind of want to direct everyone to this video. And this is like, you know, the recent things that I've been doing to my face, I guess. I love you guys. I really appreciate you supporting me, watching my videos, and I will talk to you all in the next one very soon. Bye guys. Bye.